Welcome to this week's Show or Share with Cool Tools. There are three of us. I'm Kevin Kelly, um, Claudia Dawson, and um, Camille Hartzell. We are going to tell you about a um, really cool way to save your leftover and unused vegetables in your refrigerator. Another one we have is a resource for constellations, star constellations. And we have a um, origami foldable baseball hat. So stay tuned. Okay, um, Claudia, do you have something for us to share or show? Yes, I do. Um, today, I wanted to show you guys my little food savers. Uh, we have a lot of different kinds of food savers in mm -hmm. our house. I have like the reusable bags and um, there's another one. Oh, I forgot the brand, but I know I put it in Recommendo. Uh, but these are my favorite ones right now because because <laughs> uh, they're big and colorful and um, and they're just easy to spot in the fridge when I open it. And um, and I need these because I don't use all of my vegetables. I have a lime one, a yellow onion one, tomato. So, so is, is this like um, like a Tupperware or a glassware kind of thing, a storage um, system that you put things into yeah. leftovers and stuff like that? They're called food savers and they say they like preserve and, you know, make, will make your vegetables last longer. I don't know how they work or if that's, True. I mean, it, they seem to. Um, the inside to last. Yeah. So this is. It's just. I don't. Uh, I should know what it's made out of. <laughs> okay. Um, something right. As some but kind of yeah, functionally, they're they're no different than those. It's just that they off. They're just also colorful. Or yeah. do they have a function? This is not any different than any of the other food preservers that I have. Um, it seems the vegetables last about the same amount of time um, as my like reusable bags uh, but these are bigger and they're they're cuter <laughs> I, I started with the grapefruit one uh, because you know I was eating a lot of grapefruits and I don't eat a whole grapefruit in one day so um, so that was my first one and then um, and then I bought these and I have I have two more the red onion one is in use. Um, Do you normally keep the onions in the onions? Is that also part of what happens? Yeah. Yellow so there's onion. only onions in there that are maybe chopped or leftovers. And so when you want onion, do you look at the onion? Is that how it yes. works? Yes, because it would be confusing. <laughs> Yeah. It would be confusing otherwise. You could really prank someone, but that's what I, I love about this so much. I'm immediately obsessed with these because what a great way to just get like a quick visual indicator for what is in your fridge and it will register as the food saver. It won't really be confused with like an actual onion or lime. And so, you know, I should go there first, right? If it's in the fridge, there's something in it you know immediately what it is and you know you should use it. That's like so much information to get really quickly. I feel like sometimes it's actually hard to parse what's in like a clear glass container. Like mm -hmm. it's just, I don't know, transparency or maybe my drawers are too full or like the beeswax wraps we have, but like that's a whole mystery. You gotta take a thing out and unwrap it and. I don't have time for that. So <laughs> this seems yeah. super useful. It's, it is. Yeah. And the idea is that they have a tomato, onion, as you said, like probably garlic, grapefruit, mm -hmm. apple, maybe. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, I know they have, um, they don't have everything, but I know they have like a mushroom one that's really cute and colorful. They have uh, like green peppers, red peppers. Um, yeah, that's all I can think of. Definitely garlic and lemon. Okay. Can they go in the dishwasher? I just hand wash them. I think um, I can't really make out what it says on the bottom. I think that, you know, remembering from the Amazon description, they are dishwasher. I'm pretty sure they're dishwasher safe, but. Cool. Top rack, probably. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> 
Does that make Thank any difference, top rack? I think sometimes it depends on your dishwasher, but often the top rack I think uh, is um, recommended for plastic things, things that are a little bit. I mean, more it gets the delicate. same temperature throughout. It's. It's. I think it's hotter at the bottom. Well, I, uh, maybe I that's a. <laughs> We do top rack for plastic yeah, too. Like the lid, so yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that might be a urban myth. <laughs> I would be shocked if there was any temperature difference in the, uh, uh. Uh, because it's the smallest, it's like an oven. Um, so, uh, and generally price uh, on those, uh, Claudia? Well, I think they are like seven to $12 each. Okay. Definitely less than 12, um, but I'll, I'll put that in the description. Okay, great. All right. Well, thanks. That's really Thank cool. You. you have one new convert at least. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And um, I'll have to try it with Jamin. Um, so I'll go next. Um, what I have is a really cool foldable baseball hat that also, oh. also works as a little pouch and um you snap it open and unfold it i didn't fold it up very well but you can and it folds off into a hat that fits any size head including kids heads oh nice and you tighten this up here as tight as you want it and it's a baseball hat that gets very small that's the problem with baseball hats when you're traveling yeah. You can't put them in your pocket, but this one you can. Or you put it in your backpack, and this one you can. So um, it comes in a couple different colors, but it, the whole thing folds up again into this little tiny package. And some people put in like their keys or maybe even coins or a wallet inside this when they're folding it up. So if they have a little pouch which they can kind of carry around with them nice and it looks like it does have like the semicircle cut out on the back even though that's not where yeah. the tightening happens for the, for the ponytails right yeah. exactly right and then it kind of uh, oops i was trying to get it it um it snaps together um here and um yeah it comes in a couple of different colors but it's it weighs almost nothing, and again, it fits into your pocket. So this is it's called Power Pack, and it comes in a few different colors. This one is tealish turquoise. Mm, mm. Nice. And um, you can put it in your belt, or again, for me, I can put it in my pocket, um, which is really tough to do with a regular baseball hat. And there's also another version that has a mesh. It's not. <laughs> opaque but it's my cooler got it okay and, um power pack full disclosure it's my niece who's making them oh cool oh, cool um, she and her husband are um uh outdoor designer outdoor gear designers and they have a little um side hustle making these uh power pack foldable origami baseball hats <laughs> nice very cool i'm definitely gonna get one because for hiking i i really don't i don't like the way my sun hats look <laughs> i don't no. like the way i look in my sun hats and i have like a, just a black baseball cap yeah but i can't fold it up so i'm always clipping it to the back of my hiking yeah. backpack and, and then it just like dangles but this yeah. is perfect well this one can be yours oh, so, good. Um, <laughs> okay. it's black too yeah, no, it, it's really it's really handy. Um, it's so great to be able to fold up a baseball hat. And so, it's presumably like a fabric that would like dry yeah. quickly and yep. it's lightweight. It's and... super lightweight. It's only actually weigh It's only, you know, I don't know, five ounces or something. It's really nice. wow. nothing. Do you know if it's UV protective by any chance or? I think so, but I can double check. It's pretty opaque yeah so if nothing else yeah it's like it's, it's yeah. pretty opaque nice. um so and that's you know uv has to go through somehow or other um so yeah uh i can double check but i'm, I'm pretty sure it is 
So Pyro Pack or Gummy Baseball Head. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. And Camille. Yeah, I'm uh, excited to share with you guys um, a couple of new, a couple of star finding books. They're not new, but they're new to me. Kevin, are you familiar yep, with these? I have okay. them. So these are um, were originally published in like 1954, yeah. and they're by um, uh, H. A. Ray, who is one of the who's the co-creator of the curious george books mm -hmm. and also an amateur astronomy enthusiast yeah 1954 um i just these are um, new editions and they both include a planet finder that's accurate through 2026 mm -hmm. um so the first um book the stars is designed for um adult uh, amateur astronomers. Um, it's all focused on constellations. Uh, and then find the constellations is uh, kind of intended for um, for kids, but the, the quip H.A. Ray said at the time of publication was that it's um, simple enough that even adults uh, can, <laughs> can understand it, which I love. Um, but not only are the books like, um, just really, really, really easy to follow. This is the kid's book and it shows how um, he's kind of like filled in um, oh, the constellations yeah. so that you can uh -huh. more easily parse the images. Right, right. AJ Ray actually developed like his own method for connecting the dots in the constellations to um, help them better match the semantic meaning for the um, names of the constellations. Hmm. Um, and I'm just now learning that there's like a whole, I mean, obviously astronomy has been around for a long time. Constellation illustration is an ancient practice um, and it's gone through many, many different um, iterations. But um, this spread at the front of the book kind of shows the kind of like um, early uh, uh, stylized right, um, right. Uh, method of drawing where the stars are kind of incidental. They're filling in important details, but you wouldn't necessarily be able to look at an illustration mm -hmm. um, and then use that as a, well, I some people could, but it, it's clearly a very different style. And then um, this much, much, much more um, modern style of um, kind of uh, line drawing um, came into fashion. Um, I'm gonna say and those two are the same constellations on that page. Yes, it's both the twins. these are all oh. three the same constellation. Okay, so this is Gemini, the twins. Yeah. Um, so it's like the stylized Gemini. Then um, the first iteration of line connected uh, stars took an approach that just connected the major stars in the constellation mm -hmm. by lines um, without um, necessarily um, communicating the content of the uh, constellation or the image um, that's trying to be evoked by constellation. So this is um, Ray's version of the constellation where um, it's the same exact stars, but um, with the joining lines connected in a way to better suggest to right. people yeah. holding, holding cool. hands. Right. Um, Are you familiar with the um, the apps for the phone that show the constellations? I um, I don't have one that I love, so I would I would. Um, so very I much can see this one right here. Right, where it just shows you all the day or night. Right, it shows you where. Well, yeah, because it doesn't know whether. I mean, I guess it does know, but. It's um, it's showing you where these constellations are, and and it's it's incredible how well it does it. And you can, um, you you can probably get different styles of the constellations too. Oh, very cool! And um, it's amazingly accurate. You can uh, right now, of course, it's daytime, so we couldn't see, but at night, um where you point it to, it shows exactly where those constellations are. So you could use the two in conjunction, you could use this in conjunction with the book. 
Absolutely. So love it. But if you want to actually see where they were in the sky, because it is a really tricky to kind of figure out where those constellations are. Yeah. Yeah. But this, this would help that a lot. Uh, thank you. What is this one called? I would love this to one is Star Walker 2. Okay. Or Star Walk 2. There are, there, are, there are like probably 10 or 12, and a lot of them are free. Yeah. I think this one was $4 um, or something like that. So anyway. Um, yeah, I have that one also, Kevin, but I can't, I don't retain the information. So I've definitely, the, the designs, the how to identify them in that book seems really useful. It's handy. And it's got like a bunch of the adult book has um, like uh, calendar um, charts and hemisphere charts and um, uh, just lots of um, clusters of constellations. Um, so it's just kind of fun to like page through and um, I got a telescope, so mm -hmm. I'm trying to study <laughs> study up before uh, we um, set it up um, and trying to see if I can develop some familiarity right. with the clusters. Um, the kids book has like a few different quizzes scattered throughout the book, which is kind of fun um, mm -hmm. uh, too, to test your ability to um, identify clusters of stars. Cool. Um, the other, the other really, I think, essential tool for backyard astronomy besides one of these apps and your telescope, and that's a inexpensive green laser. A green, how do you use the green laser? Well, the thing about the green laser is it penetrates through the night sky really far and you actually can point to the stars. Awesome. Okay, so this works for people who are standing near each other right. and you can like kind you're of standing um, near each other and you're talking about you want to point to that star. Yeah. You have your green laser and it touches that star. And it's just amazing in terms of I mean when you're kind of trying to work out things, you say that star there. <laughs> think, yeah. yeah. Which one? No, the one over there. So um uh that's it's a really great uh, learning tool uh, great tip yep great tip thank you can i tell you can i share one other um yeah. uh, resource um as i was learning about these different um styles of rendering um constellation drawings i stumbled across um ian ridpath's website and he's uh a UK based science writer and really like hardcore astronomy guide um, writer astronomy for amateurs but like he's written all the guides. Um, and he has a website with a ton of information and uh, this one particular book is entirely on his website called star tales and that's where he gets into the like um, uh, the historical biography of um, different styles of rendering constellations. It's a really, really cool wow. overview with links out to um, the like uh, Dun Huang star map, um, which is um, strangely in the British Library um, and um, really, really old um, Arabian star maps. Um, so it's a great wow. resource. And the name of that again, just Ian Ridpath. Um, if you just go to ianridpath.com, that's his website. Star Tales is the um, constellation history book. All righty. Well, thank you. Thank you. So that's our um, three show and or share um, for this week. Thank you for joining us. Um, we'll um, gather again and have some more stuff for you in the future. So thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.